Welcome back, everybody. One of our favorite guests has returned to the eight. He is a world renowned dog trainer with a book out, Dog Training Diaries Proven Expert Tips and Tricks to Live in Harmony with Your Dog. And he joins us now, Tom Shelby and his beautiful dog, Paula Jean. Thank you so much for coming back on. My we pleasure. appreciate Thank it. Thank you. You're on a few months back. It's always good to have you here. Remind us what kind of dog Paula Jean is. Paula Jean is a standard poodle. I adopted her six years ago, she was two years old and not doing terribly well in the house she was in and I was called to help and then they actually begged me to take her and uh, here I am. And you have trained dogs for decades. You lived in New York City. You trained yeah. dogs there for some very famous people and now on Martha's Vineyard. You've been there for 10 years or We've so We've been now. there per, uh, full time for 10 years. And so you had to come here on the ferry. How do you take a dog on the ferry? How does she do on the ferry? You socialize. <clears throat> I tell all the people in Martha's Vineyard when they ask me to help with their dog, the first thing I want them to do is rent an apartment in Boston and expose the dog to a city, to other dogs, to people, to all all the vicissitudes of time in a, in a large city because there are nine words I use in my book been there done that seen that no big deal mm. when that's your dog's attitude it's seen it all you have a well socialized dog one of the key commands you say on the ferry or in a situation like that is the leave it command right will Le you describe that for us yes when a dog is off leash the key commands are the recall to come when called to stay when told to stay and extremely important leave it mm -hmm. leave it alone whatever you're looking at leave it alone so how do you train Paula Jean to leave it to leave it well there are many different ways you can train a dog to leave it I can give you an example hopefully it'll work right now okay I uh, will toss a treat which I have in my pocket and oh, she's, she aware. she's aware she's aware just got up <laughs> and I'll say okay She's going to get the treat now. She's going to get the treat. Right. Paula, come. <laughs> Paula, come on. Oh, she's eating. Excuse me. <laughs> come here. Here comes the second one. Now, so in theory, comes, you could give this now, to her. Now here, I'm going to, yes. Okay. Leave it. Good wow. girl. Good girl. She stopped. She stopped. The treat is over there, and this dog is standing right, right and here. She, <laughs> she hasn't forgotten about it. She's looking to go back. <laughs> now, if I tell her, okay, she'll take it, or I could just tell her, leave it. And again, you need this dog to cooperate whether you're holding the leash or not. So can I release her to have here, it? Go ahead, Paula Jean. Okay. You do, you, I'd say she earned it. <laughs> yeah, I would agree. There's she some earned. kids who couldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. How did you get her to do yeah. that over time? One way is you can put your foot over a treat and say, leave it, and she can't get it until you say, okay. Another way is, is a mild correction where I could go like that. And the correction is not blunt trauma to the the neck it's the chinking sound of the tags a dog's hearing is approximately 16 times superior to ours so you don't have to yell you know and as I say to my clients who's the better teacher in the classroom the one talking or the one yelling <laughs> yes and you don't have to yell they hear you and the more you yell the more you're gonna have to yell that's this is a time of year with uh, great weather, lots of people spending time outdoors with their dogs, and there are so many distractions for dogs. So you, you, you try to keep them from running after things. You learn the leave it command there. But there's all kinds of other stimulation in the summer, right? loud music, that sort of thing. How do you deal with a dog that's sensitive to fireworks, noises, loud noises? Excellent right. question. <clears throat> there's a big difference between supporting a dog that's fearful of something and rewarding the fear response. It's a very fine line. So I experienced being at a concert at the, uh, the Martha's Vineyard Fair, and just as we were walking by the band, they started playing, which startled both Paula Jean and I, and she got quite frightened, and it was early in when I had adopted her. Mm. It was soon after I had adopted her. So she really jumped and was trying to pull and get away from it. So instead of make, making love to her, telling it's okay, and petting her and hugging her, my, my response was, wow, did you hear that? that? That was kind of interesting to see how she just responded. Wow, that was kind of interesting. And we walked. <laughs> 
walked about 50, 75 feet from the, from the music. And then I started working with her, sit, come, stay. And to earn the treats by cooperating with me, she was at the same time ignoring the music. Mm. And I slowly worked my way closer to the music, supporting her right. in her efforts to cooperate with the obedience while at the same time ignoring the music. So, as I said, it's a very fine line because so many people will always tell the dog it's okay. But the it's dog okay. might be barking. You're petting the dog. And you're, you're rewarding the barking. You're sending the message to the dog that the yes. barking is going to get you rewarded. The inadvertent rewarding of unwanted behavior is a very important concept. So when I've come to a home and the dog is on a leash being held back by the owner and the dog wants to eat me, it's territorial aggression, so often the owner is going, it's okay, it's okay as he's petting the dog. As the behavior is happening, you let a dog know you like it or you don't. So in this case, he wants the aggression the owner does of the dog to stop, but he's petting the dog and he's saying it's okay lovingly. Mm. He's inadvertently rewarding the unwanted behavior. I find this interesting. Even colors can stimulate dogs in a certain way. You have a funny story about uh, the dog seeing a multicolored cow statue. Oh, yes. We were in New Jersey and they had one of those huge cows that was painted many, many different colors. And my dog, she really got startled by that. <laughs> Most people would laugh and then just avoid it. Mm. It took me about 20 minutes as I slowly giving her treats when she showed a little boldness until she got up to that cow, close to a half an hour, sniffed it and then walked away saying, oh, no big deal. Tell me a little bit about the book, Dog the Training book, Diaries. Listen, I had over 800 appointments a year training, um, half for behavior problems. and. With so many appointments, I've been in so many homes, I used to come home and say to my wife, I have no idea what the word normal means anymore. <laughs> and I've had so many experiences that I wrote this training manual in parables and stories that make actual stories that happened to me and then I describe in the story what I did to overcome whatever the issue was. It's obvious that you love what you do. I Tom do. Shelby is the author of Dog Training Diaries. Paula Jean, the best dog, <laughs> the best dog. You did so great. Thank you so much for joining us. We My pleasure. Having you guys on. All right. Let's thank go to you. Eric now with the forecast. They're all good dogs, Liam. They're all good dogs. <laughs> 13 out of 10. Would recommend. All right. Let's talk a little